this sort of uh, talk has been in the works for a few months now. Um, it was an idea I believe I had last year, or sort of an early sort of I uh, development of the idea. And not until recently, me and Jack decided to actually seriously consider it and work on it. And um, I'd like to also say this um, whole talk is more of an announcement than an actual well thought out, well put together speech. Uh, this is a general announcement that there is uh, an intention to start a New England Alliance of Libertarian Left. I will be personally starting um, one in New Hampshire uh, once I officially move here for good. Uh, that's not right. I live in New Hampshire right now, but I'm not here for good right now. Um, so this is sort of an announcement that there's an intention to do this. Uh, other people are welcome to start their own chapters within the region of New England and, of course, other places. Um, you don't have to ask for our uh, permission. You just go out and fucking do it. Um, Woo! And uh, so there's no, uh, to be clear, uh, we picked New England because it's very much more encompassing than just uh, New Hampshire. Uh, Jack had the good point. We don't want people in Virginia um, to feel left out. There are people, some people in Virginia who are uh, within the secessionist movement, and they might think, you know, well, it's New Hampshire. And Vermont. Vermont, I'm sorry. Vermont, not Virginia. It starts with a V. It starts with a V. I was close. Um, so, geography was never my thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, so those people might feel left out if, if we have New England instead of New Hampshire. So that's why we did New England. That's one of the reasons. Um, another reason is that it's a region. And it's not a state. Um, as states are basically, uh, uh, you know, imaginary lines drawn by politicians. Regions are actually existing areas that you know exist in the in the landscape that surrounds us. Um, that was Jack's thing, and, and I more or less agree with it now. Um, the ALL um, Alliance of Libertarian Left. I kind of want to go over that, unless you want to do that, Jack. Do you want me? Okay. Um, the ALL is the Alliance of Libertarian Left. Um, it's basically a coalition of uh, mutualists, agorists, um, uh, some uh, geoists, uh, voluntary socialists, voluntarists, uh, many different types of uh, anarchists um, who basically reject um, or at least de-emphasize um, the, the role of electoral politics in, uh, in actions for uh, anarchism um, and also um, are not only opposed to the state but are opposed to um, heavily bureaucratic, hierarchical, centralized um, corporations, um, opposed to such things like racism, sexism, um, tran uh, transphobia, um, and, and stuff like that. Um, we also support um, things like um, unions, except not as they currently exist, but um, things like the IWW are, are definitely better. Uh, the industrial workers of the world are definitely more supported than um, than most of the current uh, unions because uh, through a left libertarian lens we believe that uh, the, the most of the big unions are just in it with the big business and the big government. Um, so it's a, it's a nice big party and we're not invited. Um, so um, so that, th those are a few of the viewpoints of a, of a traditional left libertarian. Traditional left libertarian. Um, our, our opinions are all over the place so you don't, you know, you don't need to uh, certainly like unions to be a left libertarian per, uh, per, per se, um, and there's many variations in emphasis and de-emphasis. Um, and I want to talk about why we use the term left libertarian. Um, there are many different roots which we get left libertarian from. One of them is the French Assembly, um, the people on the right were the people who defended monarchy, uh, the traditional hierarchies, uh, violations of private property and ind individual liberty. Uh, the people on the left, like Bastiat Proudhon, uh, Pierre Joseph Proudhon, uh, for those who aren't familiar, was one of the first people to use anarchism in a positive sense uh, of the word. Um, and uh, so Bastiat and Proudhon, just to name a few, were on the left, and they favored uh, more liberty, um, more le lot less government to no government, in Proudhon's case, for, for the majority of his life. Um, and um, they were very much against the king's and uh, hierarchy, uh, harmful hierarchy like the state. Um, so it comes from that. It also comes from the fact that liberals are called on the left, and a lot of libertarians get a lot of their roots from classical liberals. Um, so we kind of see ourselves as more of the, the new revolutionary liberals. Um, but there's also a lot of semantics involved in that. Um, so if anybody at any point has any question about why we call ourselves left libertarians, 
or why New England, or why this or why that, um, please don't hesitate to ask. Oh, oh, do you have a question? Well, exactly to the to what you just described, the, uh, Hawaii calling yourself a left libertarian. Sure. Isn't there sort of a conflation uh, of, of reasons calling yourself a left between what you just described in the French Assembly and also the fact that socialists are cons considered left in kind of a new uh, um, lexicon? You're using like both of those left seem to be kind of like the government's one alliances. <laughs> I mean, there's many senses uh, of the of these words, um, and this talk definitely isn't about. Um, and I, I'm going to answer your question, but just to be clear, uh, I don't. I'm not going to answer every question. You know, socialism and capitalism. I'm not going to get into that debate. <laughs> Um, that'll take up most of the time, I fear, okay. and I don't want to dedicate. But I will definitely answer your question. Your question is legitimate. Um, we're, I mean, we're using left in a sort of anti-authoritarian left. It's sort of uh, what Samuel Edward Conkin uh, liked in the new left back in the 60s and 70s, very anti-war, anti-corporate uh, privilege, very anti-privilege in general, very skeptical of um, hierarchy. Uh, free what speech. Pro free, free speech. Right symbol and all yeah. that. So I'll, I'll let Jack take over. I hope that helps. Yeah, and just one more word on the left right thing. This is actually going to be one of our ongoing things that we have to keep clarifying with other libertarians. <clears throat> and all we're really doing is sticking to kind of like the fundamentalist definition of left and right, where the people that were anti monarchy and anti church hierarchy were on the left. <coughs> so right now, Democrats, Republicans, any kind of social democrats, socialists, state socialists, communists, they're all on the right. And what 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 really clarified this to me one time was when uh, the communists were out of power in the Soviet Union and they were trying to run for office and actually get elected, the communist party was considered to be on the right because they were authoritarian. So, I know this is going to come up over and over again. I have people say, "Well, why do you keep calling it that? Nobody else says that's the left." Well, we're going to like probably have to have a pamphlet on that that we hand out to everybody every time. So, um, <clears throat> I also, um, you, you know, I'm, I always push the New Libertarian Manifesto because in there Sam Conkin promoted a strategy. He says we have to have um, essentially an above board recruiting strategy where we talk about the ideas to other people. And that would be called the movement of the libertarian left. Well, the only reason that it morphed and became the alliance of the libertarian left was because of a squabble between a couple of people and one said he owned the name. So I won't go into that now. But the alliance for the libertarian left, it actually has a really good ring because we're forming alliances. We're forming you know, groups of people that we'll work with. So it has a good connotation anyway. And also, it's just great for puns. Like, honestly, you can make so many puns with ALL. All, we're all powerful. You know, kneel before all. We, we got that N E A L L kneel, so kneel before all. So, uh, we, although we don't advocate kneeling before authority, so. And if you have. It has it all. We, we have it all. We've got if it all. If you have uh, A L L of New England, it spells out all one. Or, or all alone. Or alone. <laughs> so, we're thinking about if you're a lifetime member, you're going to be forever alone. Sure. Uh, and I hope somebody in the audience got that, but if you didn't, that's okay. Uh, so, uh, question. Oh. I um, get in the historical context of where I it's libertarian, but as I understand, even the Republican Party was founded on the idealism of classical liberalism, originally. Right? Um, but just, you know, in the context of communicating this to folks as it is right now, today, is there is there a, any uh, difference to, is there something different between the libertarian left and just libertarianism? Or is it more? No. I, I, I actually think, and of course every libertarian thinks that, I think we're using the word correctly. Uh -huh. and they're wrong <laughs> to use it libertarian. Like if someone comes out and says they're, they're for invading Iraq or they're for invading Iran, but I'm a libertarian, I want to do it because blah, blah, blah. To me, they're just doing justification. And they're actually, they're promoting mass murder, which is... Well, I like the idea thing. that there is something called the libertarian left because I can, it, it makes it easier to bring to all my liberal friends and say this is yes. libertarian yeah. want to check it out yeah and so for example we have a lot of uh common beliefs with uh, even modern liberals as to what the problem is but they think the solution is always another state type program and we right. think the solution is another problem another uh grassroots working with the people thing right. yeah. what's your response to the chomskyites 
<laughs> I, I have a lot in common with Chomsky. You know, he's against the war. He thinks there's a ruling class. The corporations run everything. Uh, and he won't come out and stay consistent, I think. So, of course, again, I think I'm right and Chomsky's wrong on yeah. some things. You know? I mean, when I, I haven't talked to many Chomskyites. But um, they can be allies. They, they can definitely be allies. Uh, I mean, a thing about the ALL, or at least for me personally, is that I like to make common ground with just about anybody uh, who calls himself a libertarian or otherwise, um, because I think it's helpful to have um, common alliances under certain goals that we all like. You know, anti-war or end the Federal Reserve or or this or that or for sound money and stuff like that. I think those are important things, and we can do the same thing with the Chomskyites. Yeah, consistent libertarians, which I think the left libertarians are, yeah. will have common cause with conservatives on ending the Fed, will have common cause with you know, liberals on being anti-war and things like that. I think the important thing, and, and, and Konkin says this in the New Libertarian Manifesto, manifesto is consistency. So we try to like really look at the, the libertarian principles of non-aggression and apply it consistently. And another thing is that if, you, if you're really interested in left and right and how we're kind of using it, uh, a lot of the inspiration comes from uh, Rothbard's um, years in the 60s and early 70s where he had uh, left and right the, the, um, prospects, for the prospects for liberty. Yeah, and then Roderick right. Long did uh, the prospects for liberty 40 years later uh, where he has the, uh, the famous Zaxelbacks. Uh, if you don't know what Zaxelbacks is, you really should look it up. It's fantastic. Uh, um, but anyway, the, continue, Jack. Okay. Yeah, on, on having um, alliances on single issues, for example, we went to New York City for an anti-war protest. We were actually there helping the New Jersey ALL group uh, have a table at an anarchist book fair, and most of the anarchists there were not market anarchists. But we, you know, I think we made an impression. People would come by and ask us what the heck was market anarchism and why we call ourselves left libertarians. And it's a long educational process. But actually, we walked from there to Union Square, and there was an anti-war protest. And oh, there was Trotskyites and all variety of you know collectivist uh, anti-war folks. Uh, but I think there's a place for us doing that now. Some, I think, conservatives, libertarians, or libertarian right. They would tend to be such purists that they wouldn't go to a demonstration where there were, say, communists at the demonstration. And, and we, uh, I think, are more pure because we will, you know, we'll work together on this single issue. Um, the if you if you still have you know questions, we've got all kinds of pamphlets. We have some more that are not even in a box, and that's actually one of the things that you know. Uh, an ALL New England activist would do, I think, is just help us go to events and sell pamphlets and chat with people until you're hoarse, you know. Then later on, we'll have more uh, other actions. But, you know, I just sense that within the libertarian movement, in fact, there was even kind of a problem with Porkfest where it was all kind of, in the early days, conservative libertarians that were all running for office and they want to get elected and have petitions and all that. And there wasn't really as much of a place for us, the rest of us. And with actually the New Jersey ALL people coming up and the ALL people from Chicago, they had a big table a couple of years ago. So we've made some inroads. The Alt Expo is kind of a left libertarian bias. Uh, so I just want to see, you know, if anybody that's in the area or who's planning to move to the area wants to join up and like help promote. And this is this is the larger New England area. Uh, you don't have to be from New Hampshire. Uh, I'll get to you in a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't have to be in New Hampshire. You don't have to be, you know, even planning on moving to New Hampshire. Um, if you're if you want to move to New Hampshire, what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage you to do it. Uh, not even specifically for the Free State Project, though that's a good thing too. But to join the organization to help promote uh, left libertarianism, to help promote anarchism, uh, to help promote these ideas that we think are really important, um, besides just opposing the state. Um, I'm also interested in having coalitions with other anarchist organizations, like uh, me and Joseph, we blog at S4SS, Students for a Stateless Society. I'd be very much interested in aligning myself with them. Um, and C4SS, Center for a Stateless Society, uh, the Molinari Institute, um, all these, all these places are very much interrelated, and I'm, and I'm very much uh, interested in collaborating with them on any level possible. Yeah, we're trying to promote that intellectual culture. And we'll, our site, whenever we set up a website, we'll have links to all those kind of guys. Yeah. Right. Well, my question was, do you see this as almost like a, a filling in of the demand in, in libertarianism for the fracturing of the fusionist movement that, at least from when I started libertarianism, 
I kind of saw what you were describing with the beginning of Porkfest. You know, I saw this real strong, fasc fascistic, nationalistic, you right. know, right libertarianism, and it kind of scared me yeah. because I came from an extreme leftist, Green Party, highly progressive. Right. And then I, I started trickling in a little bit and seeing a little bit of left libertarianism, right. you know, libertarianism with heart. So I was just wondering if this was kind of like a, a response to the fracturing of fusionism. Well, it wasn't a response to them. It's just the remnant uh, that managed to stay alive through essentially the onslaught of right libertarianism, which was just a place sometimes just for conservatives to go to when the Republican Party wasn't conservative enough for them. Like the Republican Party has gone all social democratic too, you know, and so they want to go to the Constitution Party or the Libertarian Party or, you know, things like that. So That's fine. It's just when I go to like Libertarian, like student conventions and stuff, Yeah. this is something that's not necessarily talked about nearly as much as, say, Mises, Rothbard, whatever, yeah. and you get more into the right edge of it. And I guess from my perspective, it just seems like middle class white kids complain that their parents are being overtaxed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay to go kill brown people and steal their own. Right, right. <laughs> and and, and I, I affectionately like to call them the suits. But yeah. um, I, I actually kind of disagree with Jack. I think this is sort of a response to the fusionist um, movement in some ways. I mean, I think that fusionism doesn't work. Let's try this fusion, you know. Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know too much about the fusionist movement other than it's conservatives and libertarians, and I don't see how they mix in the least. I see, I see the people on the left, um, what Roderick Long calls the anti-privileged left, the people who are against Obama, who have been from the start, who are skeptical of corporate welfare, um, and uh, skeptical of things like drug war, um, want to build their own communities and stuff like that, and have autonomy. Um, I'm way more for getting those people uh, than for getting conservatives, or for getting neocons, or what, whatever that fusionist movement was doing. So this is sort of a fusionist movement of a different flavor. I'm going to get to you, sir, and then to you, and then to you. More of a comment to the question. I saw the same thing that you saw, kind of a right lean. I mean, there used to still be uh, pro-war uh, libertarians. I suppose they're still around, but they don't yeah. talk as much. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we have solidly won that issue yes. in the libertarian yeah. camp. Um, it has shifted slowly. Um, the keen contingent is, uh, is uh, of, of free staters is highly anti-authoritarian, so that's helped a little, yeah. little too, um, um, and generally somewhat anti-political. So that's yes, it's, I, it's, think that, I think that's definitely a good thing. There, there's there's a stuff that going on Jack in another part of the state, uh, a little bit east of us, Keene yeah. on the west, Nashville. Um, okay, so you, sir, uh, I'm trying to get my bearings because left, right, uh, left versus right libertarianism really never occurred to me. Yeah. But I've been a libertarian for many years. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, like, can you name one prominent um, right libertarian figure? Certainly. All the ones I know are, like, Ron Paul, who must be left, right? we got Harry Brown, who was left. All anti-war, right? Well, I mean, there's, there's more There's more to being left libertarian than just being anti-war. If that was the whole shebang, then I mean... So Ron Paul... It, Ron Paul would definitely be a right-wing libertarian. I mean, oh, really? he's, he's, yeah. using, oh, yeah. he's using politics, first of all, at, and he's emphasizing it. He's not just using it. I mean, left libertarians aren't universally against politics, or completely or voting, but they de-emphasize it in response, and in response to politics, they like to build the new society within the shell of the old, uh, the old uh, IWW wobbly slogan. Um, and we like to build counter institutions, alternative institutions within uh, this society. So we don't really focus on politics. You can if you want. It's not. It's not going to exclude you from the left libertarian camp. But so that's, 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 one that's one of the many. That's one of the many distinctions. There are many emphasis and de-emphasis among right libertarians and left libertarians that distinguish them. I don't have time to get through all of them. Well, is it basically just... boil down to anarchism? What? No, there's there's a lot of other issues like being anti-corporate. Like I think a right libertarian. I don't think Ron Paul is as hard right as as Nick portrays him because he is anti-war, but. Uh, like a conservative would be like, uh, is it you said that uh, white, white like kids... Like the Cato Institute. They're yeah. more right-leaning. Yeah, like white kids that are complaining right about their parents right being taxed too much. Yeah. That would be like a conservative issue. Uh, it, but it's okay that big corporations run everything. Yeah, well, the the left libertarians class. would say that the corporations are essentially a state privilege that was dispensed essentially to this wealthy class. So who's the most enough. prominent right libertarian besides Ron Paul? Um, I mean, I, the, I first one who came, the first one who came to my mind is Walter Block, but he calls himself um, he calls himself sort of a, 
um, what does he call himself? Uh, anarchist. He calls himself an anarchist, but he also calls himself like a. No, he calls himself like a, a like a something libertarian, like a. Uh, libertarian. Plum line. The other what? thing we can do. Oh, is plum line, plum. Thank you, yeah. plum okay. line libertarian. He he says, you know, I'm just a libertarian, and that's it. No qualifiers. I don't need them. Um, we can refer like you to a couple of pamphlets too. Okay. Cool. There's, there's some really good articles. In fact, if you were to look it up online, Google it. You know, left libertarian. Or left versus right libertarian, you'd find a bunch of articles. Yeah, progressive right. versus traditional. Um, you, you, sir, and then, and then you. I hear the word anarchy. You guys talking about that? And for me, it doesn't sound anarchy. In my opinion, isn't sustainable. Period. Like you can never sustain it. What is the definition of anarchy in your opinion, and how does it tie into your movement? Sure. Um, I, I, I'd say that to be honest. No. That, that's true. That, good call. That's kind of beyond the scope of this meeting. And if you're not an anarchist, then you're kind of... Uh, in the wrong meeting. You're, no, no you're, not <laughs> the, you're not at the wrong meeting. You're not at the wrong meeting. It's How just, can anarchy survive in, in, in any well, culture? There's a debate can't, on that over in tent number 29. We can't really, we can't really debate that at, okay. at this time. I can talk to you after. I mean, I'm fully... Fine with this, discussing with yeah, you after this, match, okay. but that's, <laughs> that's kind of beyond the scope of this talk. Yeah, you sir. Okay, so you say you're anti-corporate. How are you more anti-corporate than someone on you know the right? Who, uh, I mean, I imagine a right libertarian would be against corporate subsidies. Are you also against uh, respecting their property rights in addition to that, or how, what's the difference? Um, I, let me let me answer. I'm not yeah, a sure. corporate, uh, corporate guy. At corporate, what did I want? Yeah. It's, it, what happens is, in, in the structure of the theory of rights and, and what's good about a republic and all that is, uh, the, the rights are something that belong to people, okay? So, and you know, you go to John Locke and the Declaration of Independence to talk about rights. And then they say that, okay, we'll justify creating a republic and have representatives to protect your rights and then we'll create a government. And what happens is governments actually create corporations, because corporations don't exist. They're what's called a legal fiction. And just like a trust is a legal fiction or a foundation or... Uh, so anyway, corporations only exist at the pleasure of the state, which essentially the state is, in a Republican form, is supposed to be under the people. So if, if we wanted to in New Hampshire, we could go tell our legislators to, hey, why don't you guys... Uh, you know, repeal the law that enabled corporations to exist at all, and they could. So you gotta, <laughs> gotta realize that a corporation is a, is a creation of the state, and it, but it actually, it's a grant of privilege. So a, a consistent libertarian is opposed to privilege. We say that all men have equal rights. So would Ron Paul, wouldn't Ron Paul agree with you on that? Uh, I don't know, I haven't talked to him lately. But I yeah. mean, somebody, somebody consider a right libertarian, wouldn't they disagree with state privilege? For Not necessarily. No, I so think they would say, yeah, corporations are good. Like if you read Ayn Rand, she says, yeah, you know, Carnegie Steel is like the best thing that ever happened. You Persecuted know? minority. I mean, there's, there, it's, it, can, it can range from Rand, it can also range to, they don't see some of the things that subsidize uh, the huge centralization of... Uh, corporations. It's not just that the corporations are a legal fiction, but it's also that corporations are hugely bureaucratic right now, hugely hierarchical, which there's a danger to. If you saw Roger Long's talk um, earlier uh, in the week, uh, he talked about the danger of hierarchies. And they um, also have this monstrous power to influence the legislature, to get the legislature to bail them out, like General Motors. So I think a lot of conservatives probably finally took a step leftward away from supporting big corporations when they started seeing that, you know, you get all the big banks and all the big corporations get bailed out and they go on. So there's definitely a variety of... The left was, variety was of right on this one, essentially. There's a variety of opinions, uh, is, is what I'm trying to say. Ron Paul would definitely be better on the issue than Rand would be at some point, and vice versa. Um, but uh, I, I do want to get into some of the action that we're going to do, because I don't want to address this the whole time. We can obviously... Me and Jack are available after the talk to... Um, there's well, a, there's okay. a pamphlet on that question. There's also a pamphlet <laughs> on that question. Um, so I do want to talk about some of the action that NEALL will be doing. Um, we're very interested in things like uh, anti-recruitment. Um, basically, that means going to recruitment centers for army, and, or, uh, for the military, and um, and sort of doing a counter sort of recruitment. And it doesn't have to be hostile. It doesn't have to be. Um, um, it doesn't have to be anything that's like really direct. It doesn't have to be any, even anything anarchist related. It could just be a simple um, sort of. I call it fully informed recruiting. Like yes, yeah, fully informed. They should really know. Yeah, you know, they're like 18 years old and they're being told a bunch you, you of lies. Are, you are killing for for 
You were killing brown people for no for 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 the ruling class. for the ruling class yeah. exactly. Um, so that's one thing. Anti recruitment is a big thing, uh, mostly through pamphlets, uh, just talking to them, uh, making sure that you're you know pleasantly getting across your message, and maybe when you want to give a link to something you think might dissuade them from from joining the military, you wouldn't even use any ALL. You might use another thing. But on that website that you're going to link to, they might mention the NALL or something like that. We might be affiliated with them. That's an idea. Um, I have another one that came yeah, up. Yeah, sure. A guy in the uh, Anarcho Summit mentioned, he says he thinks anarchists should try to affiliate with something nice instead of bomb throwing. So he says he should, they should affiliate with maybe like picking up the trash in the neighborhood or something yeah. like that. And so there have been some libertarians that already tried that action. You know, the, uh, what do they call it, open Food carry uh, litter pickups. Yeah. We could have a ALL litter pickup or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and to go more on that, I mean, I had an idea that we could, um, What what is the specific co concern of left libertarians is the poor. We think that the poor are very much, um, very much uh, held, held victims out, victims of the, of the current system, yeah. of, of the current system, and that, uh, and there's a great pamphlet on that, because I don't have the time to go through everything, but uh, there's a pamphlet called Scratching By, How Government Creates Poverty As We Know It by Charles Johnson, and that goes through a lot of how government currently creates a lot of barriers to entry, uh, the, a lot of the taxations, licensing, um, and stuff imposed on the poor, uh, heavily dissuade people from starting up small businesses, and keep the large uh, businesses that lobby for these regulations um, to, um, to get bigger while the small businesses have trouble starting up to begin with. Um, a lot. You have to keep in mind a lot of the regulation that was that happened during the New Deal and is still happening is heavily uh, regulate uh, heavily lobbied by big business themselves because it's just one more regulation for them. It doesn't matter. They have hundreds of thousands more and more of dollars. It do, the regulations don't bother them. It bothers the small businesses. So these regulations that all these corporations are supporting it, it hurts small businesses. It doesn't really hurt them. Um, so I also want to talk about more action. Um, I want to talk, uh, allying ourselves with uh, things like food not bombs, uh, feeding the homeless, um, helping out the poor in, uh, in, commu in uh, like ghetto communities and stuff like that. That was one of the ideas that me and Jack had a few months back, uh, and I think it's a really good one. Um, uh, Bradley Manning, yeah. support, um, I want to talk, that, that's another good thing I, I think could be done. Um, yeah, see, that's an example of real solidarity. I mean, with the internet now, there's like thousands of people that are donating to his legal defense, so... We should have mutual aid support networks. If ALL can be a part of like linking people up and helping promote issues like uh, Bradley Manning's plight, things like that, I think we'd want to affiliate with that. Yeah, um, George. Oh, uh, you said helping the poor. I would just say and that's not the best way to put it. Probably. But, um, Jim Babb had an idea in Philadelphia to um, something called like the Dig Dignity Protect Protection Project. Like in Philadelphia, a lot of um, um, people are being subjected to stop and search, right? And right. so they don't know their rights, right? They don't know they can refuse, so they just comply completely with the police. It's completely abusive. I don't know how, how it is up here. But that's one thing that could be done is uh, to give like a, give workshops on what are your rights and you know how to deal with the police and, uh, you know, am I free to go and all that stuff. Yeah, we could possibly hand out... Um these cards that say what to do if you're stopped, you know, written by lawyers, and we could maybe even have a, a lawyer that right. donate no, some no. of his time. Mark to, Stevens, maybe. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so, um, let's see. But also, you know, the hope with the poor would be to actually um, raise their consciousness. They already know that it's like that whole system is against them, but maybe, you know, give them some more stuff to read. Maybe they want to join our group. Maybe they want to work in their neighborhood, too, uh, with some of the same you know, same action project. And another thing that left libertarians might want to do um, at this point of the year is uh, voting. Uh, do anti-voting uh, sort of campaign. Uh, a campaign uh, like Brad Spangler of C4SS is doing, campaign for nobody. Um, something I, I really support. Um, so something that could be done is anti-voting uh, during... Uh, uh, New Hampshire specifically has a big role in the, pro in the, uh, in the national election because it's, it's the first state that uh, gets um, the, primary. the primary, right. And um, and so a good opportunity for left libertarians is to um, to do um, to do some anti-voting outreach. Um, so I like the workshops on rights and police. I think that's a very good idea. Um, so um, yeah, essentially, essentially, one of the things I thought we should do this would be a big intellectual pro project. 
would be maybe on our site really identify the the um, power structure. Like a lot of people think that the power structure is the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, but it's actually you know the big banks, the big insurance companies, the big in, in, at the town level it's the big real estate developers, and those are the people that have enough power to actually bribe the city hall, you know, to get their way. And I think it would just be awesome just to identify the people. And, uh, you know, maybe there are uh, actions that we would want to do to uh, oppose something that's just a blatant giveaway to the to the ruling class that, that does come out of the pockets of the poor. Does, have you considered, you know, trying to get the uh, public records of the people that get arrested for, like, nonviolent offenses, and then as they come out of jail, you actually are waiting there and hand them a pamphlet and say, we know you just got screwed by the government. How would you like to, and then... Well, I, I've had this idea for a long time idea. that the people walking That's out of the door idea. of the district court are the most frustrated, angry people you right. ever see. Right, they're the ones that you hand them, you know, here's a fresh pair of clothes, and you know, here's some food, and here's a place to stay, and yep. would you be interested in, you know, getting repentance or penance back? From the well, state? yeah, and if we integrate this with really? some of the other concepts, like the permaculture farms, maybe they just need a job for a while, and they're willing to work on a farm, and we can transport them, I don't know. We're at a very beginning stage, and the, the focus of this meeting is, do you want to join the New England Alliance for the Libertarian Left to just help? And it's going to be like a lot of online stuff first, and and then it's going to be a lot of tabling and distributing literature and things like that. Yeah, and on the subject of literature, um, I know there's been a lot of questions about left libertarianism, and if I could, I'd, I'd like to recommend three reads um, specifically <coughs> on them. Uh, the New Libertarian Manifesto, Jack's, Jack promotes that a lot, it's a very good read. Um, uh, written by Samuel Edward Conklin III, um, who talks a lot about um, agorism, of course. Um, the Iron Fist Behind the Invisible Hand by Kevin Carson is a fantastic read if you want to get a heavy-duty introduction to uh, left libertarianism. Um, and also another heavy-duty introduction to left libertarianism is Liberty, Equality, and Solidarity Toward a Dialectical Anarchism by Charles Johnson. Even that title is imposing, so gives you a kind of a sense of, of his writing style. But do we I, that one? I, I, we do, yeah. Uh, and um, I do want to say that although these are all um, it's daunting, well, they're not that they're they're somewhat difficult to read, especially for people who are not familiar with these ideas. And the New England ALL is definitely interested in writing original. Uh, introductory stuff to left libertarian, very easy readings, um, somewhere in between a pamphlet and a flyer, sort of like a, a very easy read. There's an introduction to mutualism. It's like literally like three, four pages long, and it's it's you know colorful. It's it, it's only fifty cents. It's it's easy. Um, but a lot of this, you know, NL, NLM is uh, you know uh, upwards of ten dollars or so. Iron Fist is two dollars. Liberty, Equality, and Solidarity is two dollars, and these have like you know forty pages or whatever. So. The, what one of the things we really want to do is, you know, sh shorten that down. You know, get not get their message, but we don't want to water it down. But get their message, and see how well we can fit it in within, you know, a short little uh, flyer or whatever. Uh, Stephen. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I'm a recovering anarchist, I guess. <laughs> uh, but what I would recommend is, Hi, is I've, I've actually delved into some of these pamphlets just over the weekend. I yeah. incredibly fascinating and challenging. Why not study groups? Why not develop oh, sure. some YouTube videos to That's get your message good. out? We were uh, going to link to existing YouTube videos just so we didn't have to generate original material, but... Yeah. Well, right, but but again, it, you know, there were a lot of great challenges and questions just here right now that you could really develop a simple YouTube often to, to address those. Yeah, and I think it's good at those. Very legitimate <laughs> questions. I said you're good at those. Um, so we, we also have some other stuff. Um, yeah, and also you have, have Brad do it. It has to be a short... <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> it, I'm gonna be very brief and, and yeah. in brief. I love I love Brad, but yeah. yeah. So um, some of the oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, have a, I have a question about your action. Your action. Will that can I ask that now or sure? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm definitely coming from the left, and I have a background in social sciences. So I'm very concerned about poverty, and I'm wondering. There's a lot of theory that people who are living in poverty are in distrustful institutions, so how do you think you might approach um, that community when you're doing your action? I think we have to actually uh, show them opportunities that they didn't know about to actually earn and entrepreneur. Uh, we're actually going to have a 
after the photo at, at four, we're coming back here for advanced Nagoris theory. And Nagoris theory is essentially uh, working in the counter economy outside the system. And so, you know, a lot of uh, you know, people that are in poverty and maybe accepting welfare of some sort or other just to survive. We, we acknowledge that they're victims of, of the power structure and the system that's been created around them and all the legislative hurdles and all that. So, the, so a lot of them will work under the table when there's an opportunity and, and that's their way to survive. And so a lot of the society around them condemns them for working under the table, you're not paying your fair share, blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, no, they're doing the right thing. They're actually building a uh, peaceful and prosperous society. And so we're trying to promote that ever more. Um, I don't have specific programs yet because we've not really organized that much yet. But Okay, cool. Um, and I believe there's um, a sign-up list going around, is there? Yeah, I started it. It's okay, um, so anyone who's interested, um, you can contact me at my email. Um, I don't know if I put, I'll, if I put my... Uh, actually, I'll just have I'll have your email, and if you get an email from uh, voyagingman2010 at yahoo.com, that is me. <laughs> and then Jack has his own email; he'll tell you about well, it. Yeah, you can actually write to me at jack at altexpo.org, and I think you can write to Nick at nick at altexpo.org. You can also do that. So that that might be a little it's bit sense, more. Uh, it's easy to remember. That'd be more centralized, Jack. Yeah. So I guess that'll work better. And, and oh one day goodness. we'll have Nick <laughs> at ALL of New England at <laughs> all one. All one. Uh, that actually, we are trying to get a. a do we're going to try to get a domain name. Um, all all dash one dot org. And now that I've said that, someone in the audience is going to take that. Don't and grab our domain. <laughs> don't don't grab my domain, man. And I can tell you what our a couple of our immediate needs is someone that's a graphic artist who can actually put together uh, you know layouts with artworks for like little pamphlets and also for a website. Um, so we need somebody that's good with websites. We were thinking of starting out with a WordPress site, which is pretty easy to use. Yeah. And we will have some publications, so um, I don't know if we'll just, you know, right now we can probably just go to Kinko's to get things printed or staples, uh, but, but um, we do need to continually produce pamphlets economically that we can hand out. And, and I can't that. stress enough that Jack and I cannot do this by ourselves. We, right. we plan this out for a few weeks, um, off and on, uh, um, through a conversation on Google Documents, and it was, it was very... Um, it was it was it was very good. It was very informative. But we can't do it just by ourselves. We need support. We need help. And it doesn't matter if it's just online. That is fine. That's where we're starting. We're we're definitely starting online, and we're going to try to work from there. But we need we do need help. Um, and so we are starting a treasury. Uh, there's an envelope over there where the money for the pamphlets go. Yeah. So if, if you, you have any donate, donations to any ALL, that'd be appreciated right. too. And we'll use it to pay for things like, you know, the web hosting and printing and all that kind of stuff. Because yeah. we do have to have a sustainable activism. That's a word I, I combine two things. In other words, you guys have helped. I mean, I think, I haven't counted, but I think we've raised enough money to pay for the tent. That's always something I have to sweat. And, uh, but, you know, ALL activism, it, you know, it costs small money, but it costs constantly. The more events you go to, you've got gas, you may have to pay the organization you're displaying at for your table space, you may have to buy a table, you may have to pay for your printing, things like that. So there's all these little incremental costs. Um, again, again, I know we won't be able to definitely answer all your questions about left libertarianism and all that stuff, but for those who are interested, me and Jack are available. Um, I don't want to speak for anyone, but I, I would, uh, Joseph could probably talk to you about it. I think Brad Spangler could definitely handle it and then some. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and George Donnelly is a fantastic resource, too, for, for, for left libertarianism and anarchism in general, um, in my opinion. Um, so I, I, uh, I would recommend them. Um, we do have a few more minutes, so we might, if we got oh, any left. more questions. Then any, we I mean, any more questions. Um, yes. Oh, well, well, mine wasn't specific. Uh, it was just, like, w what do you say to people who actually consider, like, um, an arc of syndicalism, an arc of communism, uh, Venus Project is like they consider that kind of the left anarchy, the left libertarianism. Okay, you got this one. Yeah, I, I think um, what what I've observed in the movement a lot of times is is people constantly arguing about the things they differ on, and I think we have to use a different communication technique, and that is look at the things that we do agree on. Yeah. Like, we, we both agree that there's this wealthy ruling class that, that creates all the wars and 
you know, kills people to steal their resources and all that. So let's just keep the dialogue going with them yeah. on the stuff that we do agree on and, and then see if we can find out why they believe that thing that we think is anti-liberty. See if we can figure it out, you know, psychologically. And, and they may have some reason we, you know, we got to be skillful at communication and use the the things in common approach as opposed to arguing about the yeah. differences. Yeah. I'd like to add, um, our sort of me uh, meth uh, methodology is that um, we're sort of using Konkin's phases, actually, Samuel Edward Konkin's idea of phases in the New Libertarian Manifesto, to sort of gauge where we are. Um, I think Jack can talk more about that. And I will, actually, in the advanced degree. <laughs> okay, so, so stick around for that, but the, the, the basic gist is that um, phase zero would be uh, outreach and phase one would be action, and we need, we need a lot more people before we can do action, but we also should do action so we get outreach. So they're very much complementary to each other. Um, and uh, is, are there any more questions? Basically, we're just leaving the rest of the time to questions. Uh, okay, I think that about covers most of what I want to get out. Uh, if you're interested in left libertarianism, again, you can talk to me, Jack, Joseph, George, Brad, and uh, uh, Stephen. All right, uh, let's assume you get it off the ground. You've got your web page. I'm assuming you're going to have some sort of forum or online community to allow discussion. And, and sort of come up with ideas. Are, do you project any type of events or any type of institutional come-togethers? I mean, for the Pork Fest, uh, excuse me, for the Free State Project, the Pork Fest is a, is a wonderful opportunity to come together and to congregate and to interact and to talk. Is that something you guys have in mind, or are you well, going to you know, like off of these guys? Well, like I said, the Alternatives Expo itself is, is almost an entirely left libertarian thing without calling it that. Um, you know, because as a left libertarian, I think the solutions are alternative institutions. So I just skipped past the intellectual phase and said, let's do the alternative institutions. You know, let's let's figure out our own farming, our own money systems, our own education system. We're we're uh, so, so for, if, if anything, the Alt Expo <laughs> is that. But the ALL could actually have its own separate table it's, it's wherever the exhibit area is. If it's not here. And then I think we should go to other organizations and exhibit at their things. Like we should even go to Libertarian Party things and exhibit there because some of them are. What was the word? Uh, we'll, we'll be trolling. What? Yeah, trolling them. Um, no, what was the, the other words? Not sabotage, but some other words. Uh, Provocateur. No, no, no. Just essentially finding finding the ones that are already Nothing friendly to our position. We'll have an alt. Well, we'll show them there's a place to go to. There's some people that are involved in the Libertarian Party, not because they really believe in that, but they think it's the only game in town. And they say, oh, you guys are doing this other stuff? I like that better. Mm -hmm. And so they may drop out of the LP and join us here. Now, that's the hope, anyway. Drop yeah. out of the LP. Drop out of that sinking ship. Um, so, um, uh, what, what did I want to talk about? Them, uh, um, I also want to comment that we're sort of, um, I think uh, Brad had this comment last night. Uh, yes, yes, I see you, Brad. Uh, I think you said that we were entrepreneurs of the left, um, but I, I really like that. I think we're very much uh, the creators of, of, yeah. And I think that about covers it. Again, questions, uh, welcome after the photo and stuff like that. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Come on. Yeah.